In today's video, we want to prove that hyperbolic cos squared of x minus hyperbolic sine squared of x is equal to 1. If you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. Alright guys, so we want to prove that hyperbolic cos squared of x minus hyperbolic sine squared of x is equal to 1. Alright, but before we can do this, we need to recall the definitions for hyperbolic cos of x and hyperbolic sine of x. Alright, and the definition for hyperbolic cos of x is equal to e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 whilst the definition for hyperbolic sine of x is equal to e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 all right what we can do now we can replace hyperbolic cos of x with e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 and we can replace hyperbolic sine of x with e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 all right so we're going to do that now. So we we'll, can replace the hyperbolic cos of x with e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. All right. And here we have hyperbolic of cos squared x. So we are going to square this as well. All right. Keep the minus sign here. Same thing applies for this. So we're going to replace hyperbolic sine of x with e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 and here we have hyperbolic sine squared of x so we have to square this as well all right so what we want to prove here is that the left hand side all right so the left hand side will be equal to the right hand side all right so when we simplify this we should obtain one right here all right so let's see what we can do now. Now, when we're squaring a fraction, we square both the numerator and denominator, all right? Which means we can rewrite this as e to the x plus e to the minus x all squared over 4, all right? Because 2 squared is 4. Minus, we can do the same thing over here. This would be e to the x minus e to the minus x all squared over 4 as well. All right, so now we would have had common denominators here. So we can put the numerators over the common denominator. All right, so let's see what we can have here now. So we'll have e to the x plus e to the minus x times e to the x plus e to the minus x minus, here we'll have no e to the x minus e to the minus x times e to the x minus e to the minus x. All right, all of this is over four. All right, and if you're wondering what did I do here, I simply expanded this out, all right? So e to the x plus e to the minus x all squared is the same thing as multiplying the bracket by itself, all right? And the same thing applies over here as well. Now we are going to expand the brackets, all right? And being that all the bases are all the same, when we multiply, we are simply going to add the powers, all right? So e to the x times e to the x, we add the powers, we keep the base. So we'll have e to the 2x, all right? e to the x times e to the minus x, we add the powers, so we'll have plus e, to the zero, all right, because x plus negative x is zero, all right. Here we do the same thing, e to the minus x times e to the x. This also will give us e to the zero. Now e to the minus x times e to the minus x will give us e to the minus 2x, all right. And I'm going to keep this in bracket. And over here now we're going to expand this side. 
So we are going to end up with e to the x times e to the x. We'll end up with e to the 2x. e to the x times negative e to the minus x. We'll have negative e x plus negative x. Again, that will give us 0. And here we'll have negative e to the minus x times e to the x. That's minus e to the 0 as well. Negative x plus x, that's 0. All right, and here we have negative e to the minus x times negative e to the minus x. That will give us positive e to the minus 2x. All right, close bracket. All right, and we'll put all of this over the denominator, which is 4. All right. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to simplify both brackets, all right? So here we are going to have e to the 2x plus e to the 0 is 1, and e here to the 0 again, that's 1. So 1 plus 1, that's 2, plus e to the minus 2x, all right? And over here, we're going to simplify this bracket now, and we're going to end up with e to the 2x e to the 0, that's 1, so we'll have negative 1 here and negative 1 here as well. Negative 1, negative 1, that's negative 2 plus e to the minus 2x. All right, so that's what we have here. And we're going to put all of this over our denominator, which is 4. Can't forget about that. All right, now we're going to get rid of the parentheses, our bracket. So we have e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the minus 2x. We'll now use this negative sign to expand out this bracket over here. So we'll have minus e to the 2x plus 2 minus e to the minus 2x. And we'll put all of this over our denominator, which is 4, all right? So we can do some canceling here now if you look carefully, all right? So here we have positive e to the 2x minus e to the 2x. We can use this to cancel this right here. And here we have positive e to the minus 2x and negative e to the minus 2x. So we can use this to cancel this, all right? Now let's see what we'll be left with. We have 2 plus 2, that's 4 over 4, all right, which is equal to 1, all right? So we can say therefore proven. So hopefully you'll be able to follow this proof. As I mentioned before, this is part one in a series of videos to come. So you can look out for some more hyperbolic identity proofs. All right, so you can stick around this channel. All right, guys, so this is where we'll be ending today's video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet done it. Please give this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. As always, thanks for watching.